The S&P on track for the best quarter since 2012, and a handful of stocks have gone parabolic. Check out the moves in names like Chipotle, Ulta, GE, Xilinx, and Hess, all up around 40% or more this year. So given these moves, we thought it was the perfect time to play. Trade Love game, Scott. Great game. <laughs> That's Woo. right. Timmy's favorite game, Wanted. trade it or fade it. Let's get right to it. Guy, <laughs> Ulta Beauty, <laughs> up more than 40% this year. Trade it or fade it. I like this game. You're a sports fan, though, right? right? I mean, yeah. I know you're not feeling well, so I want to ask you a quick question. Feeling great. What are you talking about? If what you, would give you that you're, idea? You're a Washington Capitals fan. So if the Capitals That's right, were Stanley to Cup defending chance, trade Alex Ovechkin, wow. it would be because they didn't want him anymore. It's just an odd game to me. The trade it actually means you want to buy it. I just want to bring that up because I know you're not that familiar with this game. Thank but you I'll very play much. it correctly for you. Trade all to beauty. God, and people out there can see, how can you trade? This stock has been parabolic over the last six months. Yes, it has. But you look at the quarter, ridiculous quarter in terms of comps. Inventories were up 10.8% year over year. Sales gr growth was close to 20%. Margins continue to hold in there. This, this, this program they have that keeps people in, everybody feels good about being in Ulta, is f firing on all cylinders. And quite frankly, at 23 or so times forward earnings, it's not crazy expensive in terms of their earnings growth. So I say trade it. Trade See, it. relative to themselves, I mean, this is a consumer products company that I, I, I'm not sure how much pricing power they have. I actually think it's more expensive than that. I would be fading this oh. stock, Scott. By the way, I won't get into the sports metaphor. We don't need it. Um, I, I think this stock, to me, in an environment where, if anything, sounds like you guys think that the consumer could be under some pressure. Not sure why you want to be in cosmetics discretionary. I think you trade it because of the fact that the free cash flow is there, and we talk about that every single night when we break down all these stocks, and the fundamental story is there as well. So balance sheet is great, trades it 23 times, and what's the growth? Huh. Yeah. Giddy up. Tremendous Good growth. enough. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Dan, you're up next. Chipotle, 62% sure. in 2019. <laughs> trade it or fade it? Uh, I, think, I think you fade it here. What a game. And I'll tell you why. I mean, this is, this is, is back in 2015, this company printed $15.40 <laughs> in earnings, and they saw that basically evaporate the next year with all that E. coli sort of stuff. Next year, they're expected to actually get back to that peak earnings, about $15.50, $12.50 .5 uh, this year. So we're almost there. The stock is basically about 10% away from those all-time highs back in 2015, trading about 56 times this year's experience expected earnings, which is expensive to its history, um, especially when it's getting back up to this earnings ramp. So to me, I just think if you have not been in this trade, uh, you're not getting in it now for what might be an epic double top once investors start to discount the fact that they're back at that peak earnings to me. So uh, I'm, uh, I'm fading this one, I think you would say. I would agree yeah. with Dan. Nathan. Oh, really? I, wow. Okay. No, cut. Why, why do you have to be that way? I'm just saying. You know? no, seriously, I mean, everything has got to be confrontational. Yeah. I'm agreeing with you. I think you're making cogent points. The double top you speak of comes around 750, I think, July or so of 2015. 45 times forward earnings is ridiculous. But you know what? The valuation's been ridiculous for the last hundred dollars. So sure. you have to ask at a certain point. You just been wrong. I've been trying to fade the stock for quite some time, but I will say this. I agree with Dan. You could have the mother of all double tops Whoa. and it come comes into form no, around just, seven, what's what's oh? Just you said mother and anyway, all, it's been a burrito blow all. up for sure. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Tim. Hi. GE up thirty seven percent this year. Trade it or fade it. I'm gonna trade it. And obviously GE's up thirty seven percent is after a blasting and a plastering in twenty eighteen. And and what's going on here? Well, uh, between the sales and at least the ones we've outlined, first of all, we have very near term forty billion dollars uh, in in spin outs and Wab Tech and, and Biopharma, you name it. And so I think look the story for GM really is about balance sheet. Nothing changes overnight, but I think Larry Culp is making change faster. I, I don't think there's a lot to be excited about other than um, the sum of the parts still make sense to me in this business. And I think if you look at the earnings multiple, uh, it's very debatable what they're going to earn, but I don't think that even matters. At Kim, this is point. it getting whittled down? You say the sum of the parts. Are they just taking those best parts and kind of kicking them out? And I just think that last month we saw when they announced that deal, right? And that was something that everyone was really positive about. The stock was up 20% in the pre-market. It gave it all back over the next couple of weeks. Are investors starting to lose uh, patience or, you know, still it's a very complicated story. Here. Well, I think they need to be very patient. I, look, Baker Hughes 
is to me in an environment where I think energy has slowly re-rated over the last couple of years. I, I think Baker Hughes might be valued at a discount right now. They don't have to go sell it. Uh, that's part of the story here. But definitely look, getting that, that utility, that power book into a place where it's, it's not a loss leader, but that actually even it's running at, at even kill is what I think Larry Culp is doing. That will help this company slowly revitalize these assets. You think it's going back a low single digits I think digits it's the Titanic. Again? I think oh, they're moving. I think oh, they're moving the oh. deck chairs around on the Titanic right now. And the problem is he's not getting the prices that he needs to get. He's doing what he has to do and what he needs to do. But I look at the balance sheet. You still have a hundred plus billion dollars in debt. I mean, that's a big number. And so at some point in time, I think people will start looking at that and get more and more concerned. It's been a great run from six up to here. But can it go any higher? I don't know. All right. You want to do Xilinx while we're I'll at it? It's up almost 50%. Yeah. Go for it. Sorry about no. that. Yeah. Well, in Xilinx, you know what? This is a name that actually I, I, I traded all the way up to 100 and then I gave up. But then suddenly I look at the stock now and it's trading a buck and a quarter. This is a stock that's showing incredible growth. They've got great cash flows. They're doing everything right. They're in the right sector. But there are times where you get pullbacks. I think you're starting to see a little bit of a pullback. I'd like to see a little bit more. and That's why I say trade it. I don't think you want to fade this one too much. You fade this thing, you're going to be looking at the stock trade in 150. We do a little segment on We do trade it or fade it on the show. We never do another segment would you called rather? the We do a would you rather as well. We also Dude, there, there's a production call at 430. We don't need to have another one at 530. Let's just go. The folks at home, let's get going. The folks at home, <laughs> oh, here. And the right? folks at home know that we do Conference call at 430. Yeah, We're having like another one now. Power we do something pitch. called power the power pitch. pitch. Yeah. And you, Pete might recall this. We did a power pitch on this Xilinx when it was trading about $88. And, Dan, you, you were so mean to me. I mean, you're mean to me a lot, but you were You're particularly mean tonight, to me that guy. night. You're but sensitive. I'm with Pete on this. Soul 5G thing reports on April 24th. I think it continues to rally in earnings. Giddy.